Labour's campaign breaks down on day two of the election, John Burko finally admits that he's a Remainer, and Boris bounces back after a first difficult day. Now we mentioned yesterday that the, the Conservatives had a poor start to the election campaign with a lot of mistakes and gaffes, uh, but last night Boris uh, started his campaign rally, and uh, the Conservatives are taking a new approach. They no longer want to be your slick, a uh, very kind of scripted and polished uh, campaign machine that you always see. They want to go around the country and have rallies across all regions. And uh, it was interesting because we were looking at the uh, pictures and the videos from last night. It uh, looked very similar to a, your typical Trump-style rally, in a good way, uh, with the uh, members and supporters uh, in the room. But also towards the end of this video, uh, we have some uh, important news and updates for you. So make sure you watch to the end of the video. Uh, but uh, going back to the Labour Party. Um, so after the Tories difficult day on the first day, day two of this election campaign and Labour already breaking down. So we've had uh, this morning Ian Austin, who is now a former Labour MP, uh, coming out and saying that he is now backing the Conservatives and Boris Johnson because uh, the Labour Party is not fit for government. The former Labour Minister urges party supporters to lend the Tories uh, their votes. Ian Austin, a former Gordon Brown aide and Labour Minister who quit the party this year, has urged Labour supporters to lend the Tories their votes in the next general election. Uh, in his latest furious attack on Jeremy Corbyn, he says uh, that the Labour uh, leader is unfit to lead this country. Uh, cannot be trusted with defence and security and always seems to back the UK's enemies. He said that the Labour Party has been my life and until this year I have only ever voted Labour. Mr Austin, uh, who held Dudley North by just 22 votes in the 2017 general election, uh, has written in his uh, local paper and he continues by saying that uh, it has really come to something when someone like me uh, says traditional uh, decent patriotic Labour voters should vote for Boris Johnson and the Conservative Party this time. Well, look, Nick, I only ever wanted to be a Labour MP and I only ever really wanted to be the Labour MP for Dudley, you know? And it's been such a huge privilege to do this job. Job I've loved, the place I love. But I've got to be honest with people and I, I'm i not going to run at this election. The country faces a big choice. There's only two people who can be Prime Minister on December the 13th, Jeremy Corbyn or Boris Johnson. And I think Jeremy Corbyn is completely unfit to lead our country, completely unfit to lead the Labour Party. And after 34 years of... I joined the Labour Party as a teenager. I worked for the Labour Party. You know, in my 30s, I was a government advisor. In my 40s, I was an MP and a, and a minister. But So it's really come to something when I tell decent, traditional, patriotic Labour voters that they should be voting for Boris Johnson at this election. I can't believe it's come to this, but that's where we are. You, someone who, let's be honest, used to pick up the phone to this programme and have the odd shout occasionally when you were Gordon Brown's press secretary. Let's be clear, you are telling people yeah, I am. to vote Conservative, mm -hmm. to vote for Boris Johnson. I am. I think this is the choice the country faces. The British people are going to have... Look, the public's got to make this choice. Following his comments in the morning, Ian Austin has now been joined by other Labour politicians and activists, including a former Labour MP, John Woodcock, who is also saying that uh, Jeremy Corbyn is not fit for government and people should make sure that Boris Johnson is the next Prime Minister. Now, as if that was bad enough, especially after last night when the deputy uh, leader, Tom Watson, also said that he's resigning. And previously, one of our favourite Labour politicians... That's sarcasm, by the way. Jess Phillips uh, previously has said that if Tom Watson resigns, I'm going to be resigning too. And now there are rumours that it, it, we could, any moment, uh, any day now, Jess Phillips could also resign from the Labour Party. So the campaign is going really well for the Labour Party and Jeremy Corbyn seem, seem to be completely deluded and are ignoring all these signs about how bad things are in their party. Uh, for example, they're still focusing a lot on uh, Oxbridge, uh, where Boris Johnson uh, is the MP for. Uh, they have Ali Milani, uh, who is the Labour candidate, who has had some dodgy views in the past about this country. Ali Milani, who is originally Iranian, um, like me, but is not sound, is trying to unseat uh, Boris Johnson in his constituency. And uh, as we said, he, he believes in some dodgy views. For example, when he was asked by a friend, I'm guessing, to go to Southampton for some reason, he said, I don't need to see any more 
white people. He also said, I hope all white, old, male and female examiners go through bankruptcy. Now, we all get frustrated over examiners, I guess. But I have no idea what race or gender or any of this had to do with any of this. And this is the whole point that we always say that identity politics is actually going to be destroying this culture if we're not careful. So we have to uh, tackle this head on. And we have to make sure that Ali Milani doesn't become the next MP in that constituency because Oxbridge deserve better than this. And uh, we've heard that the Brexit party are trying to unseat Boris Johnson in Oxbridge as well. Basically, they're trying to get Ali Milani to become the next MP and uh, by putting forward a Brexit party candidate against Boris Johnson. They want to uh, split Boris's vote. I mean, well done, guys. So, yeah, imagine Ali Milani in Parliament. Yay. Now, Labour's Brexit policy is also not going down well. Um, they always say that it's very straightforward. Yeah, I'm sure it is. But we have a video of someone actually clarifying what the Labour policy actually is. Hi, everyone. Today, I'm going to be taking the Explain Labour's Brexit position in 30 seconds challenge. OK, here it goes. Start that timer. Negotiate a Brexit deal that protects jobs, workers' rights and the environment and then put it back to the people for a final say. OK, got a few questions. <sighs> what does Labour want to renegotiate? What does Labour oppose about the withdrawal agreement? Will the EU renegotiate? When will Labour decide how to campaign? Will Labour have an official position? Will children and foreigners be able to vote? Does the referendum settle anything if turnout's a lot lower than the last one? Will Starmer be allowed to campaign for Remain? Will Corbyn campaign? What side will Corbyn campaign for? Will Labour spend taxpayers' money campaigning? OK, Is that's it. it. OK, guys, I gave my best shot. How do you think I did? See, told you. It's very straightforward. Very simple. Uh, but moving on, we know that this election is a Brexit election. It's the most important issue that we're facing right now. Uh, but it, the, the, there are other problems with the Labour Party and, and their campaigns, because even if we leave the EU and we happen to have Corbyn as Prime Minister, our lives are going to be changing forever. As we know, over the last few days, uh, they've been going around uh, targeting the wealthy and the billionaires because they're very bad. Um, and uh, Jeremy Corbyn is now saying that, oh, yeah, I, I don't know any billionaires. I, I, I've never met any of them, so I'm going to basically target them because you know, I don't really care about them. But what's the truth? Well, I'm, I'm sure there are billionaires that need defending, but personally, I don't know any. In fact, I don't know any billionaires, so I, I'm at a bit of a disadvantage there. In fact, I don't know any billionaires. In fact, I don't know any billionaires. Yeah, he's never met any billionaires, unless you're talking about your typical self-guilted, champagne socialist, celebrity, tree-loving crybabies who donate to the Remain campaign and the Labour Party. Now, let's talk about John Burko, the speaker of, well, the former speaker of the House of Commons, who was very impartial and was very professional. Yeah, sure. And who basically did everything he could to stop Brexit. Well, he managed to delay it again. And... He always said that he was just doing his job, but now that he's no longer speaker, he's basically exposed himself. He's admitted that uh, he doesn't like Brexit, and he's a Remainer, and yeah. So now that he has some time and he's got this freedom, as if he wasn't expressing his opinions before, he now feels like he can express his opinions now. In his first public comments since standing down from the comments, Mr. Burko said, that he has always been fair to Brexiteers, despite believing that the, uh, leaving the EU was harmful to Britain. He said that the Commons did its job well in blocking a no-deal Brexit through cross-party alliances, as he rejected claims from the Attorney General Geoffrey Cox that the dead Parliament required an election, rejecting claims from leave-backing MPs that he had bent the rules to block Brexit. Mr. Burko said that it was Parliament, not me which had stopped Britain leaving the EU on the 31st of October. Yeah, it was Parliament, not you. Sure. Uh, but let's just be happy because Boko has now left. We have a new speaker, uh, Lindsay Hoyle, who is very professional and actually impartial. He managed to stop an amendment from the Remainers that when they were trying to give votes to the 16 and 17 year olds and the European citizens. Uh, so that's good. Now, you remember yesterday's video when we mentioned Kay Burley, the Sky News presenter who empty chaired the Conservative chairman uh, James Cleverly, even though he wasn't actually invited to go on her show, but she said, you know, he needs to be here. If he's not, I'm going to empty chair him. Now, the social media has hit back with a lot of memes and jokes about Kay Burley. 
We've had a lot of tweets uh, about empty chairs. Uh, one says, following the success of today's Kay Burley show, Sky News have revealed their lineup for tomorrow's program. Another one from Harry says, I didn't book Kay Burley to come to the house, but as she's in the same country as me, it seems fair. Martin Foster says, just about to do my interview with Kay Burley, but unfortunately she hasn't turned up. I didn't book her, but regardless, these are the rules now. Another tweet says, Kay Burley has just refused to come on. Disgrace. And finally, James Hamblin says, Just to confirm, I was not booked to be on Kay Burley's show either. Absolutely hilarious. So I'm loving how some people like Kay Burley thinks, you know, just because they're at the top, they could do whatever they want and no one's going to notice. But the internet always hit back. The people aren't stupid. And so I'm loving all these memes. And there are also some complaints to Ofcom about her behavior, not just about yesterday, but over the last few months. Uh, she's, so, she's shown her uh, biases in, in, in her job as a Sky News presenter, and it's, it is disgraceful. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but as we've mentioned before, we are traveling around the country during this election to go to various seats and constituencies to report from them, meet the voters, and the interview the candidates. And the best way to find out where I'm going to be uh, uh, is if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, I'll let you know where and when I'm going to be visiting uh, your areas. If you want to come and say hi and meet us uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, Friday, I'm going to be in Sutton in uh, South London and in uh, Paul Scully's seat. And uh, but if you follow me on uh, Twitter, I'll let you know what time. And on Saturday, we are visiting, uh, we're going towards Essex. Uh, Romford and also Dagenham and Raynham and then we're going to go through the Midlands and the North uh, next week so again as I said if you follow me on social media uh, you could uh, find out where, where we're going to be and uh, make sure that you watch this uh, channel every day to get your updates you could uh, subscribe to the channel and also click on the bell next to it so you get notified when I release a new video videos come out every day I'm Maya TC and I'll see you tomorrow with a new video